It's a glorious day here at Ellen Road. It has to be said, it's unseasonably warm. It's uh, around about 19, 20 degrees. It's so warm. You know what I'm going to say. It's so warm that <laughs> Tony Dorigo is not, and it's October, is not wearing a coat. I don't need it. It's amazingly warm. It's brilliant out there. Conditions look absolutely perfect. Australians around the world welcoming climate change. <laughs> <laughs> Takes the chill off, doesn't it? Two, te two teams emerge. Leeds United all in white, interestingly. Bristol City all in black. Um, like a chess match. And in the middle of it all, the officials who are in orange. So uh, quite the scene out there as the two teams emerge and stand and line up in front of the West Stand. The Leeds United 11. Well, there's changes to it, and it's going to be intriguing to see how Leeds set up right at the start of this game because there's a suggestion as to how the 11 will look. In the next few moments, we'll see confirmation of that. But uh, the fact that we have Ampadu and we have Kamara and we have Gray, all nominally central midfielders, in that starting 11 suggests it will look a little different. Yes, it certainly will. And just looking at uh, what we saw the formation wise. I just find it hard to believe that will be the formation because there's too many people moving out of position where they play their best. So, so let's see. Well, let's see, yeah. Um, as the teams break now, and Leeds go away to our left-hand side and marching on together. Boons out over the PA here with the home fans joining in, clapping the players as uh, Melier heads towards the penalty area. Well, very soon all will be complete. I'm already saying <laughs> Archie Gray at right back. Only because Archie has moved over to the right back position. Well, there you go. Uh, this that, punditry bit's easy. I tell you, that's the well saw, well observed, Grim, I have to say. <laughs> Impressive. But that would make sense, simply because that's the, the move that is least certainly obstructive to the rest of the team. So let's see if that's the case. But whatever it is, the players will be organised, they'll be clear on their roles and responsibilities. And we'll be working together to win this game of football. Yeah, so um, I think it is going to be Archie Gray at right back because once more, based purely on the evidence and what I'm seeing, he's moving over to our side of the pitch. And uh, as the players break from the huddle, I would strongly suggest that that's how Leeds are going to accommodate the presence of Gray, Ampadu and Kamara all in the same starting eleven. Luke Ayling, of course, on the bench for this one this afternoon. Um, Pascal Strout is the man who's taken the armband, so he gets to captain the team in a league game from the start for the first time. He was in uh, the captain's capacity in the game away at Salford in the Carabao Cup. And Pascal Strout wears the armband from the off in the championship for Leeds today. Bristol City in their half, in their huddle. And the... Uh, man down below implores the side and the fans to come on because it does have the look of a, a significant game potentially for Leeds another three points on the board would uh, do everybody the world of good particularly with the break coming up set things up nicely keep Leeds nicely tucked in in the pack anything other than that and there'll be a sense of disappointment that will linger for a fortnight to get tucked in the pack we want to break away don't we and you're right there's a huge pack Crystal City only one point behind yet we're six, they're 12th, so it just shows you how tight it is in the middle of the day. Yeah, Birmingham flew up the table as a result of their victory against West Bromwich Albion last night. Um, it's extremely congested through the mid positions in the uh, teams in the teens, only a couple of teams in the teams in the 20s. The Leeds are aiming to close that gap at the top, but um, there's work to be done before that's achieved, and the game is underway. The Leeds are kicking from left to right as we watch from the West Stand in this first half. And if we needed confirmation, we can see that the confirmation is that Archie Gray is the man delegated with a right-back's role here and already looking over his shoulder, keeping an eye on the man that he may well be marking, Sam Bell, who is um, Bristol City's leading goal scorer with four so far this season. I think what we've seen from Archie as well is that he's very disciplined in that midfield role, you know, going with his runners, uh, he's strong and he gets forward well, so he has played, I do believe, a few games at right back as well. So let's hope uh, it's a successful stint. Yeah, it could be transferable skills perhaps from that uh, the role he adopts in midfield. Leads with a throw in in the Bristol City half, collected 
in midfield by Joe Williams. Won back by Jorginho. Again, sticks out one of those long legs. Ampadu helps it back into his own half to Rodon. And now Strauch. Ball over the top. That Byron starting his uh, third game in a week. Picks up on that far side touchline. Can't control. And the ball goes off his foot and out for a Bristol City throw in. In front of the stand, Daniel Farker watches on. Yeah, I think the three games in a week for Byron. Clearly previously he got left out. That was three games in six days. That extra day has made all the difference and hopefully uh, he's absolutely fine. But he, he's been very good, hasn't he, for us? He really has played well. He it is who launches the ball forward. And then it's uh, picked up in the centre circle briefly by Perot. But then it's diverted all the way back to Max O'Leary, the uh, Bristol City goalkeeper. There's a couple of familiar names in the Bristol City lineup, familiar only in that they have uh, Leeds <laughs> connotations. O'Leary, the goalkeeper, is one, and Yeboah's on the bench. On the bench, absolutely. Jorginho spreads the ball a little wide to Somerville. Somerville helps it further wide to Byram, who's attacking the edge of the box. And now Somerville on the edge of the area, plays it square to Piro. Piro is tackled, Ampadu comes in to win the ball back for Leeds United, still on the attack. Now, James on the edge of the penalty area, great cross into the middle, cleared out as far as Ampadu, who has a swing at it, and it comes off his right boot, it comes off the outside of his right boot, and it spins away and behind for a goal kick. Well, while all that was going on, a Bristol City player was uh, holding his face and head and trying to... Uh, stay down, that was Joe Williams but just there, there were plenty of options weren't there, in and around the box, Somerville really wanted the ball as well but good play, opened them up, got a good cross in just couldn't quite get someone on the end of it Keith Stroud is our match official, familiar figure um, in the higher echelons of the EFL and he's been to check on Williams who's back on his feet, he was down on the ground all the way through that move, you're looking to the referee perhaps to see whether he'd stop play but Leeds are on the attack so it would have been a brave man who made that call he didn't and uh, Williams is okay anyway so O'Leary it is who will take the goal kick O'Leary takes his time and then it comes drops nicely into the path of Bell before Dan James puts Cameron Pring under pressure and the fullback just about manages to work the ball back in field to Naismith and then one back by Rodon from Wells but then Wells gets the ball back from Rodon and now he attacks and he runs straight into Pascal Strout or does Pascal Strout run straight into him that's Keith Stroud's interpretation because it's a Bristol City free kick right through the middle about uh, 20 yards outside the penalty area well, Rodon was unfortunate because he read the danger really well got in front but he just slipped off the side of his boot, allowing Wells to pick it up and run at us. And uh, Strauch, I think, just obviously stood his ground, gave the free kick away. Another early free kick that we need to defend. Matthew Wells brought back the one change to the Bristol City side. They beat Rotherham in midweek thanks to a 95th minute goal. All the goals in a 2 1 win. Both sides scored um, from 80 minutes onwards. So um, they've had a successful trip to Yorkshire already this week, have Bristol City. Naki Wells is the one player coming into the team off the back of that performance. Who, well, unfortunately, we know all about. <laughs> yes, a little <laughs> bit of history there, isn't there? His name was uh, being bandied around in the aftermath of the game against QPR, of course, on Wednesday night. Free kick, played into the penalty area. Rode on with a header, straight up in the air it goes. Somerville helps it on. And then out towards the edge of the box, Piro's back there defending. Only manages to divert it into the crowd, and Wells has it on the edge of the area. Curls a fine ball in. And it's just fractionally in front of the head of the attacking forward. Big appeals from Bristol City for a, a push there. And the appeals are so big that a player has been yellow carded. Just watch Sam Byram. That's what uh, Bristol City are appealing about. Byram is behind him, gets the wrong side of his man. And just a little nudge. And Well, when you get away with it, it's good defending. When you don't. It just might, might have been a penalty, but for me, nothing doing, Bryn, nothing doing. <laughs> and you are completely unbiased. Absolutely. <laughs> Both players were kind of horizontal, throwing themselves at that ball at the far post, and uh, Sam Byron was lying on the top of Dickey, and uh, referee didn't give a free kick stroke penalty and did book the uh, protesting Bristol City player. So, 
One moment of early anxiety as uh, the ball finds its way out to Pring beyond Gray on this near side. Now Bell. Bristol City have made a bright start here. Pring from just outside the penalty box on his right foot with a low drive. Hits Ampadu and it's spun to safety over the head of Jorginho. But he'll set off in pursuit, having flipped it on almost for himself there. And then the ball is won back by Bristol City and spread intelligently wide to Sykes, who's in the penalty area and attacking. And the ball has come off Byram and gone behind and Bristol City have a corner kick. Well, the opposition have started well, haven't they? Certainly confident, knocking the ball around and finding a, a few gaps. Of course, at home, we want to be positive. We want to dictate play, but that does mean we're going to be moving up the pitch in the space in between us. When Bristol City get the ball, they're using well. Some more defending for Leeds United to do as Joe Rodon organises things in that penalty area. And Sykes, who's gone over to the far side, takes it short. Pull back for Naismith and back to Sykes to cross it. In it comes now, heads up from Rodon as well. Kamara chases to the edge of the box, but beaten to it by Williams. And then it's played into the penalty area by Pring and headed clear again by Rodon. And then all the way into the centre circle where it may come back. Oh, almost dropped short for Dan James to pick up as the ball was exchanged between two defenders there in their own half. But uh, Bristol City come again and Williams has it. And he's up towards the edge of the penalty area to Bell out wide on the left side with Gray in front of him going for the byline. He's run it too far. And you would say that Archie Gray has passed, possibly passed his first test there. He certainly has. That's excellent defending as well. That so easy to, to dive in thinking that Bell was going to play that cross instead. He's been taught well. Stay on your feet. Make it difficult. Eyes on the ball. That's exactly what he did. And we've got the goal kick. Melier in conversation with Joe Rodon about what's going to happen with this goal kick. What is going to happen with this goal kick, Nate? move forward they move back and eventually Rodon just taps it to Melier and then he helps it out to the left side of the penalty area to Pascal Strauch rolls it forward nice little flick off from Somerville to Byron she's shown a bit too much of that but Somerville's done well to win it back and he'll charge forward for Leeds United just showed too much of it to the defender who was tracking in there and it was cleared away from the edge of the box and then swung away in a panic from one side of the penalty area out of play just by Daniel Farker's technical area on this near side. Excellent recovery, wasn't it, from Somerville to win the ball back nice and early. I thought he put it on maybe on the outside, but dancing feet. We saw that in the first half, didn't we, against QPR. I thought Somerville was excellent. Not quite as effective in the second half, but he's a player we would like to get the ball to at his feet and run at defenders. Nice work from Gray. Shifts the ball one foot to the other, but Bell takes it off him. And... Uh, Ray will win it back again for Leeds. Both sides conceding possession rapidly there. Ampadu saw the run of Byram, couldn't pick him out, so he gives it short to Kamara instead and gets it back off Kamara. He's moving forward for Leeds now through the middle. Ethan Ampadu spins into trouble. Needed a call there, needed to go out to the right. He went to the left and lost, but lost the ball in the process. Bristol City on the edge of their own penalty area, working it from left to right. And now preparing to cross the halfway line with Sykes in possession. Ball goes back into Knight in the fullback role. Comes further back. And now carried forward towards and over the halfway line. Ball should be telegraphed enough for Gray to pick it up easily, which he does. Now Ampadu again. You can hear the shout of man on as uh, Williams went in to close him down. I think what you're seeing from Bristol City is a team extremely well organised defensively. You know, filling those gaps. Ampadu was you know, looking up earlier and didn't have a, an easy ball out. He lost the ball there. Midfielders, you know, going nice and tight with their opposite number. So you have to be a bit, uh, a bit clever to break this lot down. Hero from James. Good ball. Spread wide to Byron. Byron into the penalty area to Somerville. Shoots goal out. Oh my word! Jorginho almost on the goal line, and the ball has gone up and over the crossbar, and he was inches out. And he pulls his shirt over his head. What a miss. I'm going to try and explain how he missed this, but I, I really am struggling with it. It is uh, it's not the easiest simply because it bounced before him. However, he is only two, three yards out and just underneath the crossbar, and it's a goal. Jorginho 
We see that confidence. I just hope that doesn't suddenly start to dissipate after that miss. But that was a, a goal that should have been. Oh, his name is being sung. The leader on the attack again. James plays into space for Ampadu. Left foot shot from Ampadu. Driven in hard and straight. And O'Leary could only pad it over the crossbar and behind for a corner. You can see Jorginho with his hands on his head as well. He's still thinking about that miss, but Ampadu left foot. That really was a great strike. Plenty of power, unfortunately, direction. Straight down the goalkeeper's neck. Somerville back to Kamara, edge of the area to maybe curl the ball in now. Kamara tees it up for Ampadu, lays it for James. Now Jorginho with a shot from the edge of the box. Second chance, maybe. Crowded out here by black shirts and just... Bristol City under a period of pressure, just happy to hammer it over the halfway line where Strout chases back, goes to retrieve the ball. And um, I think there's still collective head shaking going yeah. around Ellen Road. Still not sure what happened exactly. Oh. Incredible. Road on. Now Strout. And now wide it goes to Somerville. Spiram. It's a ball run across his body, Jorginho offside. Not much in it, but just, just straight beyond the last defender, I think. He did, Carl Naismith actually defended well. Always knew that Jorginho had just gone a yard the wrong side. He stood there, hand up. And of course, always play to the whistle. You can see there, he got back and still made a challenge. So the free kick is taken, short from the edge of the penalty area. And um, a check on the clock tells us we're in the just about moving into the 14th minute here at Ellen Road, and it's still scoreless. Not quite sure how. Cleared forward by O'Leary. Road on underneath it for Leeds. Looping header forward. Pirro beaten in the air. Ampadu underneath it has fouled his opponent. A little nudge in the back. And uh, referee Stroud was on hand to spot that one and gives Bristol City a free kick in the Leeds half on the edge of the centre circle which goes back towards the halfway line and then Sykes in the uh, leads half before it goes back into Bristol City territory with uh, Naismith and then push wide to the right side for a cross into the penalty area Stroud needed to get in the way of that one Wells was lurking beyond him so Pascal Strout cut the ball out, knocked it into touch over on the far side. It's a heck of a ball. Gardner Hickman over there on that right-hand side just whipped it in, but Pascal retreated quickly three, four yards just to block that one, but have to watch that delivery from that right-hand side. And a lively opening to this game. Yeah. Bristol City. See the attempt to get the ball forward, come off the head of uh, Byron. Then a foul on Jorginho. A nudge in the back from Rob Dickey. He had to, didn't he? Because it was certainly three on two for us. Some of it was tearing down the left-hand side. He was free, but Dickey was having none of it. Made sure the ball on the man didn't go past. So he's free kick, almost on the halfway line. Strout goes further back to Rodon. Joe Rodon back to Pascal Strout, and then wide to Sam Byram. Over the halfway line to Somerville. Back to Somerville and Byron between them. Combine well, Jorginho, fabulous ball to lay it into the path of Somerville, who's into the penalty area, trying to make space, shoots, and it's deflected. And it'll carry all the way out to this near side for a throw into Leeds. Wonderful football in the build-up there from Leeds United. Oh, it certainly was, but Byron, Somerville was great. But there, a little touch around the corner from Jorginho. After that, I saw Piro as well making one run, stopped, went backwards. He ends up in the six-yard box, but... Somerville goes it alone, couldn't hit the target. Leads throw, Archie Gray takes it, gets the ball back, down by the corner flag, pins it into the path of Piro. Piro trying to get past the first defender, it breaks for Dan James, he crosses instead. Jorginho, who were queuing up there to try and make the header with Leeds, and Byram was almost on the back of Jorginho as Jorginho actually met the ball, headed it down to the ground, and it just spun behind. Well, it's difficult because Byram is the one that should have headed it, and did he give it? A shout to Jorginho, however, Jorginho, of course, he comes onto his head, he's got to go for it, but good play again, good ball in, just not quite finding the finish. A little conversation going on between O'Leary and uh, Naismith, who are intent, I think, maybe on just slowing things down a little bit here after a 
high pressure period from Leeds as the goalkeeper just about works the ball away from the oncoming Jorginho and they get it up to the halfway line successfully Williams has it in midfield goes back to Naismith Naismith into the sunshine slightly short but Piro can't quite get there and suddenly it's Bell in the Leeds penalty area trying to play it into the middle and I think well, I thought the final touch was actually off Bell there but uh, the final touch was off Gray so suddenly they turn defence into attack and they have a corner kick to be honest when that ball first went there I thought Melia you know, should have been out there and I think he looked up but into the sun I just wonder at that end now he wearing a, a cap so he could see it Archie Gray eventually does well and gets back but I think Melia's positioning if he could have seen the ball he would have cleared it yeah, the, um, the sun is an issue. You can see Milan Melier shielding his eyes as he waits for this corner kick to come in. Just done it again there, the big gloved hand up to his forehead. As the ball is swung towards the far post, from where it's headed away well by Sam Byram. But it'll be picked up in space with time by Cameron Pring, and Pring delivers back into the Leeds penalty area. Jorginho can't quite get there. Bell has it. Gray's on his back. Now Jorginho stepped in front of it. Jorginho, so strong keeps Bell away from the ball still <laughs> wow um, some great defensive work there from Jorginho he's like a big bear when he gets around the ball and um, getting him off it is difficult and I think he's certainly developed that because clearly English football uh, you certainly need to be strong up top to hold it but with the confidence and using his strength and of course his balance and ability he certainly uh, is a hard man to knock off the ball. So, Bristol City have a uh, throw in. And it's thrown back in the direction of their penalty area. And then it's gone down that far side for Strout to have to defend, which he does, but at the cost of a throw in to Bristol, level with the edge of the Leeds United penalty area. Far side as we watch from the West Stand. So uh, Leeds have had good moments. Bristol City are attacking at the moment themselves as well. They've responded as the ball is still in the hands of the throw-in taker. Knight goes back to Williams. Back to Knight it is again. Whips it forward through the middle for Bell. First touch is quite heavy, and then the flag is raised to indicate that Bell had come from an offside position. Yeah. Good play again, and, and Archie, I like that. He's right back is in his position uh, normally, but he understands, looks across the line. He's just the right side, steps up to catch the player offside. The Leeds have almost been caught out with the uh, player across the back there. They've got the ball from right of the penalty area to the left of the penalty area to Strauch, and Strauch at a stretch just about managed to play it against the oncoming Bristol City player, Sykes, and it went out for a Leeds throw-in. That's the risk in that strategy. Don't start, Bryn. Don't start. <laughs> you know, I can't help myself. <laughs> Just like to point that out. OK. There is risk in that strategy. Down the line it goes. Flicked on by Piro. Now Jorginho. And he's dragged to the ground. He's still hacking away at the ball, even from a prone position. No free kick given. And Bristol City have the ball on this near side, the left side, with Bell charging to try and keep it in play. You'll hear from the reaction of the crowd that he failed to do that. And those long raking balls, it's just something we have to be wary of, certainly with Bell, with Naki Wells. You know, quick, sharp players. They're looking to get released from the centre-halves quite quickly and directly. Gray with the throw. Go straight past Pirro to James. Delivered forward by Naismith. Bell again, the intended recipient. With Gray to his back. And now Pring. All this going on just outside the Leeds penalty area. Pring turns into the penalty area and turns into a crowd of white shirts. And Melier has to scurry off his goal line and slide at the feet of the Bristol City defender to make sure he gathers the ball. And in doing so, clatters into Joe Rodon. <laughs> exactly. He's uh, had a few knocks. Hasn't he, Joe Rodon? But tough as old boots, he'll be fine. He's a centre half. Swansea lad, centre half. Perfect combination. Pascal Strout. Forward it goes to. Somerville back to Strout across the back to Rodon. One of the Leeds players will be off on international duty. The three Welsh internationals all going away for meet up after this game. 
Kamara with Finland. Rodon has it again. Out to Archie Gray, who's going off to join uh, the England setup as well. The youth setup. Now Ampadu. Back to Gray again. And then back to Rodon. Across the back to Strauch. And he'll go long. Oh. But he's uh, gone long and wrong there because uh, he didn't find Byram as he intended. Yeah. Went straight through into the right fullback position. And it was picked up and picked off. And now Bristol City across the halfway line with Pring. Bells the wide man for the first time. Ball into the middle. Has to be defended. Strout slides in and just about keeps his arms out of the way of that one. Bellier under pressure. Gets it clear quickly. And from a pass back from Ampadu. Bristol City pick it up in the centre circle. Good period for the away side this. Uh, Gray does well to pick out a crossfield ball. Intercepts it and it goes back to Melier. It's been a good game so it far. Has. It's been a, a proper even contest you'd say by that one massive moment for Leeds. Well, it should be one up, simple as that, but you're right. In the play, no doubt, Bristol City are a danger. There's an interesting attempt by Somerville to get Jorginho in with the diagonal ball. Just a little too far beyond him, and O'Leary came out to gather that one. Bristol City over on the far side touchline. Strout will have to defend it with Naki Wells charging in. Melier will let him run and let him come and they'll play the ball beyond him to Rodon who's turned and drives forward for Leeds now through the centre of the park. Still with Rodon, looking for an out, gets it from Archie Gray. Gray may come back here from that near side. Oh, he's lost out to Bell and Wells will pick it up and Strauch will have to go in to close the door quickly and he does that extremely successfully. James just keeps the ball in play, rolls it down the near side touchline for Pirro, gives it back nicely to James. And James dances past one challenge and then the second he goes down and the referee sees no foul and the ball is back in possession of the Bristol City defenders and they clear it long. Pascal Strout started all over at that with his intervention in the centre of defence. Necessary intervention when Leeds had lost possession as well. Yes, he certainly needs to make sure he won that challenge, which he did, but been impressed with Bristol City how they mix their play up. I think they can pass it through midfield, they can hit it long and diagonal. And when it's any sort of danger at the back, it's it's just launched up top. So the chances to kind of recover the ball aren't so straightforward. Well, a very experienced manager in the shape of Nigel Pearson, of course. And um, I've had a, a pretty decent start to this season. Last time Leeds played them here, Leeds won by a goal to nil. Luke Ayling, the goal scorer. Prior to that, the meeting between them was at Ashton Gate, the opening day of the season that ended in promotion, and Leeds were extremely impressive in winning 3-1. This promises to be a pretty tight contest from what we've seen at least so far. Just looking, Jorginho from the back, probably grabs him, pulls him over, does get a piece of the ball, but a foul given. Over the top, Wells off the back of Strout. They both fall over, and in doing so, Neither was able to get on the ball. Well stays down. The game goes on. Jorginho chasing up in the Bristol City half. It's fed back to O'Leary. Still in the other half, Wells is down. Referee's seen it, and now he stops play. So um, it's an injury of the ankle, it would appear, for Mackie Wells. Just looked an awkward challenge, didn't it? Both players went down. No malice really in it, but no doubt Mackie Wells has come off worse. So uh, treatment will be required. Physio is called on. Leeds will probably come to the near side touchline. It's warm, so they're uh, taking on fluids. Well, you can just see his right foot, wasn't it? His ankle. Just when he's looking up at the ball there, just getting caught. Melier in conversation with the referee whilst uh, Wells continues to receive treatment. Yeah, and all the Leeds boys, you're right, taking a drink, it's that hot. I've even taken my jacket off, Bryn. Yes, Honestly, yeah, I have just got speak. a shirt on. These it's are, October and I've just got a shirt on. Wow. These are crazy times, really. Crazy in. indeed. In fact, Keith Stroud himself is taking on fluid over there. He's in the uh, half of the pitch, he's in sunshine, the other half in shadow. Actually, Daniel Farker's talking to Joel Piro as well because see, you, just see the, you can just see the right ankle falling underneath. 
Pirro has been, I suppose, not as involved as much as he would like. And so he's just trying to advise of what positions and where to go and, and try and get close, of course, to Jorginho as well. That's important. And no doubt when he gets it in the right areas, I mean, he, you know, he's excellent technically. But of course, at times, when it does go wide, can he drift in late as a second man into the box and find that space and stick it away? He's got four goals in seven. Really good return so far. Well, it was a subject of major conversation and discussion it in the was. Daniel Farker pre-game conference, wasn't it? It was, and I listened to every single minute of it, and I thought he, it was a great explanation. And, you know, we talked about rotation and movement, but all the added elements, I think, that uh, that Farker explained about him playing at Swansea and at the high press rather than sitting back on the counter-attack. So all of those things meant, you know what? I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Leave it to me. <laughs> This is the way we're going to play. And the gold boot designation as well. I like you? that. <laughs> you know what? The golden boot, I don't care about the golden boot. I don't care what my players think. Nothing individual. It's all about the team. However, in every single year of my management, <laughs> <laughs> they've won the golden boot. Yeah. <laughs> it was very good. It was very good. good. It was entertaining. Yeah. And, uh, well, and, the, and the, uh, the full stop to it all was that, right, I'm going to tell you this once more and <laughs> once it. more only. And I'm just going to advise you now, Bryn, when we do interview him after the game, we are not <laughs> asking ask him. him. No, don't, ask him. don't. I tell you, 4-0 up. If they win 4-0, <laughs> let's go and ask him for fun. <laughs> yeah, it uh, probably isn't the question that's going to be on the list post-match. Let's see what the questions are going to be around, because Bristol City are going to have to make a change here. Wells is um, not going to come back on. Cornick, who he replaced in the starting eleven. So a natural replacement is going to come on in his place. And Naki Wells has a, a long and painful walk round from the far side of the ground, being helped by the physio. And um, there's not a great deal of sympathy for him from behind the goal, I think it's fair to say. Were you expecting any? Not really. <laughs> exactly. Sam Byram down the left-hand side for Leeds United. Infield to Kamara, now square to Ampadu. Ampadu on to Jorginho, gives it back to Ampadu. Ampadu comes back to Rodon on the outfield players of that Bristol City half, Bristol City break, trying to close down. And they do put pressure enough on Strout that he has to go back to uh, Melier. Then it comes forward to Rodon. Still, Bristol City are a man down. So, um, one of those power play situations here for Leeds United, whilst they can keep the ball in play, which they're trying to do now with the ball out wide to Byron. Back it comes to Kamara. Kamara. Helps it back to Strouk. Square to Rodon on the edge of the centre circle. Rodon back into the centre circle to Strouk. Pushes forward for Leeds. And just rolls it back into the path of Kamara. Now patiently wide square to Rodon. To Pirro and back to Rodon again. And then out wide to Dan James. The uh, little X Swansea triangle. Now Ray. Back to Ampadu. Into the middle to Kamara, spins and looks forward now to Somerville. Somerville, lovely ball through for Jorginho. Goes down in the penalty area, big appeals, nothing doing for Leeds United. And the ball spins behind and that will be a goal kick and no more. Excellent play, nice and patient, finding the spare man. But once Somerville gets into that area, he turns so quickly, looks up and then plays it into Jorginho. He goes down, no doubt the defender doesn't get any of the ball, but is that enough for a penalty? So the referee thought not. Well, I guess Bristol City would say things have been equalised, haven't they, or equaled out because they had their own appeals. Um, in the far post challenge of Sam Byram earlier in the game, it was actually not dissimilar in a sense, it was um, a maybe, not a definite. Nothing doing, and uh, Leeds have to start again. Ball over the top onto Connick, who's on now for Bristol City. So they're back up to the full 11. And they're moving forward down the right hand side as well. Byram's going to go and defend this for Leeds. He gets the ball first and then comes back into the edge of the area to Kamara. Kamara's under pressure, sweeps it forward. Pirro can't make much with it, but Leeds may win it back. They do through Strauch. Good ball from Strauch to Jorginho. Oh, what a shame, Somerville was going to his left, Jorginho actually turned into the challenge on his right, but he does get a free kick in the process. Yes, Jorginho, just a couple of times, you think, you, know, you don't always have to get hold of it, you can just flick it on, we've seen that before. Somerville was flying on that left-hand side that time. Ray's ball is behind James, 
Run back well by Ampadu. Now Dan James can drive on for Leeds United. Runners in the penalty area over the head of Jorginho. Goes all the way to the far side of the penalty box to Asensio Somerville into the middle. Jorginho. Now it's almost broken for Pirro, but almost is the operative word. It's cleared behind instead for a corner kick to Leeds. Close, but good play again. James just puts it in an area rather than trying to pick someone out. Somerville then backs up the defenders in there. That's why I like Joel Pirro then just drifts into those spaces. But you have to say that the Bristol City defence as well, they're filling gaps rather well and a good block. So we have um, had 32 minutes of this first half and it remains goalless here. Dan James with a corner kick for Leeds. Swings it high to the far post where the heads go up and the final touch is off a Bristol City boot as uh, both Rodon and Byron were involved there for Leeds and trying to challenge for the ball. And now it's going to be Somerville who takes the corner kick that results from this near side. Somerville. As uh, Luke Ayling appears from the dugout down below. Somerville with the ball into the penalty area. Heads go up, Strauch beats, just uh, can't get his head to it there, Pascal Strauch, he made a really good jump. Maybe he went just a little early. Just a yeah. minor thing, he missed the ball. <laughs> yeah. the Everything jump, else was good. It was really good, yeah, but determined, positive, just didn't quite meet the ball. Kamara in field to Ampadu, who's in that Bristol City half, played into Somerville, oh. skips through two challenges, Almost. held up on the edge of the penalty area by the third. It goes backwards towards O'Leary, who just um, scoops it up in the air and gets it far away as he can. Bell, heavy touch, but a great challenge from Archie Gray. Timed his tackle to perfection there, slid in in front of Bell and knocked it into touch. Yeah, really good play. And Bell, of course, you mentioned their top scorer, hasn't really had a, a sniff down this left-hand side after the first, what, five or so minutes, so then Archie Gray's doing well. His name rings out around Ellen Road in response. Pring has the throw in for Bristol City. Rodon with a header into touch again. So um, they advance a little way down the near side touchline. The away team, Pring again, will take the throw in. Back into his own half to Naismith. And across the back it goes to Dickey. Ooh. Kamara goes down, but um, can't win the ball back for Leeds in the process. Somerville goes in to try and do that against Gardner Hickman. Down the line towards the Leeds byline it goes, where Byron defends successfully. Plays the ball against the uh, oncoming Bristol City player, and out for a throw, which will be Leeds' ball. Once again, just Bristol City. They fill gaps really well. And once we do have them on the ropes, push them back, move the ball quickly. Surely we'll get to a good few more chances. Leeds lose possession just outside the box, over in from that far touch line. Great little spin by Connick. He goes to get the ball into the middle and he gets it into the middle. And it's come all the way across the penalty area out to this near side to Pring. And now he brings Williams in. Now Bell is on the ball. Again, Gray's read it well. Just allowed Bell to come on and then knocked it into touch. So Bristol City respond, Leeds have that little period of pressure. And now Bristol City respond with something similar themselves. Now, surely didn't keep the ball in play down below as apparently so. So Ampadu has to go in and win it. Now Kamara, now Rodon. That's a long one forward. James keeps it in play with a little flick on. Naismith helps it away from the oncoming Jorginho. And Dickey, the right side centre-back, has the ball on the edge of the centre circle. And he just plays a long ball out towards this near touchline where Bell waits once more, but it's over hit. Bell can't stretch to keep that one in, and Leeds do have the throw in this time. It's certainly a tactic, isn't it, from the centre halves at times when we're pushing on to try and get Bell on the ball on this far side, but Archie really is taking up some good positions and making that difficult. Has the throw in for Leeds now as well. He's, uh, he's looking a little quizzical, he's saying, Where can I throw this? Down the line to Jorginho, who's come in to try and help out. Naismith wins it for Bristol City, keeps it in play. Goes past Jorginho, comes back in at him. Good work between him and Gray there. Now James is sent scurrying away down this right side touchline. Dickey will get to the ball before him and just pushes it back to O'Leary. Suddenly Dan James is in his face, so O'Leary had to clear 
hurriedly there. And the header forward from Strauch finds Somerville over on the left side. Back towards the halfway line, it comes in Byram. Kamara, oh. great turn, makes space for himself. Plays it into Piro. Piro just on the position for a shot. Hits it straight at the keeper. It was moving in front of him, so the keeper has just batted it away. And it's come for Jorginho. Crosses into the middle. Breaks there. Yes! And it's put in by Dan James. Finds himself in space at the back post. And Dan James drives the ball in. And takes the celebrations of the fans behind the goal. Little moment of pressure from Leeds pays. Leeds United won, Bristol City nil. Wow, really good goal. I thought we could have stuck it away even before eventually Dan James sticks it into the back of the net. But all started with Kamara with a, a wonderful turn in midfield. And eventually we get it across into a danger area. And Somerville couldn't quite finish it. But Dan James following in just hard and low in the bottom corner. The pressure has finally told our half chance. We take it this time. And we get our noses in front. Dan James off the mark. Brought back into the team. It's his 50th appearance as well. So a notable day for Dan James. And he's marked it with the Leeds United goal. Well, we've certainly had opportunities, haven't we? We've uh, deserved to be a goal up already with Jorginho. But eventually, a good play has broken our way and we get a goal ahead but at the same time this Bristol City side they're made of stern stuff so we've got to be aware and still play to the same sort of level and tempo and more importantly concentration yeah, I don't think Leeds can afford to dip today no hero lovely lovely ball to Somerville who's charging away down the left quickly up to the edge of the penalty area into the penalty area and uh, defender Dickey did well there actually Somerville helped him a little um, but Leeds almost win it back on that left side with Byron, but he couldn't quite divert the uh, interception to the path of Somerville, and it goes behind for a goal kick. Yeah, so the defender did do well for Somerville when he runs at you with that ball. If you then try and make that challenge, he's quickly enough to, to knock it around you, but just hold off, hold off, and get your body in the right place. That's exactly what uh, Dickey did. Essentially, Somerville is wearing gloves, by the way. <laughs> So it must be a... Even I wouldn't a, wear gloves, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even I wouldn't it, do that. I suspect it must be kind of maybe one of those things where he needs to wear gloves because he scored, didn't he, the other night, the winning goal. Um, so I don't know. Maybe it's a superstition is the phrase I'm looking for. Right. Uh, maybe he's just a little chilly. Well, he's chasing gloves. the ball now. This will warm him up, hopefully, as he's done well. Well, he did initially did well, and then he fell to ground. And uh, it needed a sliding intervention, which was a good one, actually, from Sam Byram uh, on his wrong foot to keep the ball away from Sykes down that right side for Bristol City. Now here's the challenge, we are one nil up again. Now can we then start to just dominate and get that second goal? Didn't come in midweek against QPR. And we had to be patient and, and concentrated. Didn't play our best stuff, but we, we got through it. Can we, can we have a nice easy 2-0 win, Bryn? Yeah, yeah. And that's what we'd like, wouldn't that's we? What, that's the least we'd like. Yeah. Great challenge. By Kamara to Jorginho, into Piro. Piro, keeper's come out, he's done well. It's broken for Ampadu. And Ethan Ampadu uh, got his angles all wrong there as he tried to put the ball back. The keeper was prone. Ampadu was belting in from the edge of the penalty area, but he got round the ball and it spun off his boot and went behind for a goal kick. Kamara, wonderful challenge. But this ball here is half a yard too hard. He had to get on it. The keeper was really quick off his goal as well. And the space was closed down, and Piro couldn't get it past. Certainly Max O'Leary in the Bristol City goal. Final five minutes of the first half. At the moment, the Leeds fans like it, they like it, they like it, as it's danger for Melier, but he comes and gathers the ball as it bounces high, with Connick the um, substitute in proximity. Melier just bowls it out underarm to Strauch. Back he goes to Melier. Rodon on the other side gets the ball now. Rodon holds it up, goes across the back to Strauch. Strauch looks forward and then looks back. Melier gets it. Back again to Rodon. And back to the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper comes out the penalty area. 
And then plays it to Strauch. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bryn. It's the extra touch it gets me every time. <laughs> and then uh, as Leeds try and play the ball forward. Yeah, excellent. Ampadu. Great interception to win it back for Leeds. In a position of promise. Jorginho, what a turn. Oh, he spotted Ampadu break into his left-hand side. He was unselfish there, Jorginho. Wonderful turn to open things up and he couldn't quite divert it into the place that Ampadu wanted it and it ended up in the hands of the goalkeeper. And that's probably one of the times where he probably shouldn't have passed that ball and that's what I think you get with young players. They'll end up as they mature, make uh, the right decision more often than not but at the moment you're going to get some brilliant play and then sometimes you think, oh, you know, there was a better option on. If I was the Bristol City match commentator, I would have been high-pitched a moment ago because uh, <laughs> Max O'Leary was playing on his own goal line with Leeds players bearing down on him. But uh, as is often the case, and it's usually the case, he dealt with it. They got the ball away and Leeds have it back on the halfway line now with Kamara Gray. Oh, lovely from Archie Gray. Right. Let the ball run across his body and he carries it forward down the right side for Leeds United now. Looking to get the cross Brilliant. in. Great play. Really was good. He shields it with his big frame as well but with balance and speed then gets away from his man so what we are doing really well is picking the ball up in the midfield third whether it's the midfielders nicking it off Bristol City or the centre halves we're now starting to really push them back and there's no easy ball for any Bristol City player from the back Kamara to Gray infield to James arm round the shoulder of James he goes down and Leeds have a free kick and it's um in from, what is it, 15 yards in from the near side touchline. It's uh, probably a bit too far out. It is too far out for a shot. That leads to a line players up on the far side of the penalty area to attack the cross into the middle. Yes, a couple of minutes left. Just get a quality ball in, take your time, get organised. See what uh, the next trick from the training ground is going to be with this free kick. Well, it's definitely Dan James who's going to take it. Somerville and he had a little conversation, but Somerville's gone to take up a position just outside the penalty area. So James it is with the right foot who will um, play this as a single Bristol City player forming a some sort of wall in front of him. Just outside the penalty area. James, hands on hips. In it comes, curled in. Cleared out as far as Somerville, now out to Kamara. Leeds keep everybody in that penalty box, so if it could come back in, they're all still waiting. Rodon has it. Leeds are being forced a little further away. Kamara down the line. Somerville pushed in the back there as he began to skip away from the marker. And so Leeds get another free kick, this time pretty much exactly the same position, but other side of the of the pitch. Yes, Jason Knight just too eager. And Somerville, in his first touch, is, is that good. Sometimes you've got to try and get the second ball. Instead, he went straight through the back of him. And now another free kick. So this time Somerville will deliver it. So again, the uh, in-swinging option is there. Again, one-man wall takes his position in front of the Leeds player and that line of white shirts is on the edge of the penalty area matched up by the black shirts of Bristol City Somerville goes in deep towards the head of Rodon headed it down nicely into the area couldn't pick out Ampadu Bristol City smuggle the ball clear picked up by Archie Gray and then hooked out towards James on this right side it's a good ball from Gray James keeps it in off the chest uh, he's closed down, and in that movement, the ball comes out of play for a Leeds throw-in down by the corner flag. Good free kick to the back stick, and Rodon does everything well to head it low and down and back into the goal, but as you rightly say, Bristol City defended it well, got it clear, but Archie Gray with some good play. Gets us a throw-in down the near side here. And to Jorginho, lets it run for Piro to shoot! Oh, it's deflected off a defender who's standing in front of him there. Leeds have it again with Kamara. Now it goes wide to Somerville, into the penalty area. Looking for space as it comes into the middle. Four added minutes and we're into the added time period now. Rodon on the halfway line, heads it to Strauch. And Strauch is more than happy to go back to Melier. And Melier goes it back to Pascal Strauch again. And then Kamara, wide to Byram. Can't find Somerville. And uh, it's picked up by... Bristol City and they have it through Gardner Hickman on that far side who's fouled by Somerville just a little hand in the back and um, it will be a Bristol City free kick just in from the touchline midway inside their own half one thing has been impressive since we've gone a goal up I think we've dominated you know we have not then sat back we've, we've done the right thing at the right time we're pushing them back and Nigel Pearson there is uh, well you can see he's rather red-faced and, and shouting and screaming so that's always a good sign 
Um, Nigel Pearson does, has a rep does have a, a reputation from previous times as uh, potentially being quite a fiery character. But um, Yes, he's my coach at Stoke City. Oh, right. so, so, yeah, so the last year, I know all about him. I know all about <laughs> him. You can speak from experience. Yeah, right? and, but he's a really, really good guy, but, you know, demands certain things. He's always a, a leader, a centre-half when he played. Uh, physical chap, very vocal, and he's taken that into his teams. Rolled on. Gives it back to Melier. And now out to the penalty area to Pascal Strauch. Strout wide to Byram, hugging the touchline, back in field to Strout, rolled into Somerville. Somerville again dances through challenges and plays the ball through the middle. Well, I think Jorginho might have been onside there. It was just cut out before it got into his path. Wonderful work again from Somerville. Somerville. And Strout again does well for Leeds. So just step in and get the ball off the toes of Connick and out over that far touchline for a Bristol City throw in. And we've had um, two of the added four minutes now. Somerville again is on fire, isn't he? This first 45, he's played extremely well. He'll go wide, he'll come inside, he'll find a pocket of space. Difficult to defend against. Piro, has he kept the ball in play? He hasn't, and uh, it will be a Bristol City throw in. It's midway inside the Leeds half. Bristol They're complaining City. because they want Piro to get booked because they thought the ball was out and Piro just booted it away. And then they've taken the throw in from the wrong position. And I think the yellow card yeah. is going to be shown <laughs> to the Bristol City player. Gardner Hickman. Who, who didn't take the throw in from where he was meant to. He took it from much further back than he was meant to. And uh, Keith Stroud has not endeared himself there to well, the players in the Bristol City shirts. On both occasions when Bristol City players have been booked, it's been us making the foul or giving uh, them a free kick or a throw in. And uh, they end up complaining and getting in the book. They have another throw in, but this one's further forward. It's level with the edge of the Leeds penalty area, so they won't be uh, retreating to take this one, Alphansi, because we're into the final minute of the first half, so this gives them a chance to launch it. It's going to go in there long. Everybody's come up for Bristol City for this throw in. Connick's going to take it. He's taking the long run from the far side touchline. And they're all lined up in the box waiting. Hurls it in. Melier punches it towards the edge of the area. Driven back into the crowd. Shot goalwards. Ooh. And shot just wide. And it took a deflection. And it was Naismith's effort that ended up going behind. And that's their best moment, really, in the game. In these final seconds of this first half. It certainly is. And a, a vital touch. I think Hampadu just with a little nick on his boots. Over it goes. So there's defending for Leeds to do in the final seconds. Ten of the four remaining, 10 seconds of the four remaining as this corner kick comes in now. Into the middle it goes, heads up and in! And Bristol City have conjured up an equaliser. Naismith with the header, emerged in all sorts of space and couldn't really miss. And it's proved to be a crucial moment for Bristol City who are back on level terms right on half-time, 1-1. Well, it's an excellent delivery, but really disappointing. So close to half time, we couldn't see it out. And who is picking him up? And of course, we do play the zonal system, and someone has to just go and attack that. It beats Rodon and Naismith going backwards, easy header into the bottom corner. Well, that is disappointing. I mean, there are seconds to go, and this I think the whistle will go as soon as this um, kickoff is taken, the restart is taken. And Bristol City have, yeah, there you go. As soon as it's taken, it's heads down and head towards the dressing room because we would have been saying something very, very different just seconds ago as Leeds headed towards the tunnel. We'd have been talking about a pretty good first-half performance all round. Chances created, just the one taken. But now there's a very different conversation to have, perhaps. Yes, certainly is. This reminds me a little bit about the Crystal Palace game when we were one up and flying and suddenly they get a late... Last minute equaliser in the first half. Let's hope the second half doesn't resemble that game whatsoever. But Bristol City, we clearly saw in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game, they're very well organised. They've got a threat on the counter-attack as well. But after going a goal up, I thought we dominated the game. But, of course, they fought back, got an equaliser. Now we have it all to do in the second half. But we can do it. So Daniel Farker has got to um, lift the players a little, perhaps, here and um, make sure that in the second half, Leeds get in front and stay in front. Half-time scoreline, it's Leeds United 1, Bristol City 1. 
And I just noticed as well, as they were coming out, Bamford had an arm around Jorginho and was with him for about a good 60 seconds, just, I'm sure, telling him, you know what, I've missed them like that as well, but get in the right positions, eventually they will go in. Yep, going to be there to score. And um, hopefully you'll stick one in this second half as Bristol City suddenly break an attack. And Melier had to come quickly to the edge of the penalty area. It was a curve ball into the path of ball, uh, Bell. Melier got there just ahead of him. And Pascal Strout now brings the ball forward for Leeds United and plays it for Somerville to chase to the edge of the penalty area. Dickey's in front of him, considerably bigger. Holds Somerville away from the ball. Gets it back to the keeper who gets it then forward. On this near side, but um, Gardner Hickman is forced back to Dickey. Strout with the header from the halfway line. Comes back to Gardner Hickman who just puts it up in the end. Wide looking for Bell who brings it down and Gray takes it off him. Under pressure here, Archie Gray towards his own byline. He's forced and he's done well to hold the player off and get the ball away to Dan James. And James looks forward, but he drops it on the chest of Naismith, the Bristol City goal scorer, right on the stroke of half time. A blow from which Leeds are going to have to bounce back in the second half as they kick towards. Those on the cop who are making the noise inside the ground at the moment. Ampadu, good intervention for Leeds. Knocks it wide right side to Dan James, who runs straight into Naismith, who's got a fairly easy job of just uh, taking the ball away from him. And uh, then he cuts back to Williams. And then Williams into the fullback Pring. And then it goes over the top aimlessly, straight through to Melier. And rolls it out to Joe Rodon looking at uh, both sides and the way they're set up and lining up exactly the same as at the end of the first 45 and but for what 60 seconds of that first 45 uh, we were certainly the the better side but falling asleep at that corner kick now just got to recover from it Jorginho plays the ball off him to the path of Piro down the right hand side runners arriving Dan James is one of them passes just ahead of Dan James but there was a a moment of panic there shown by Rob Dickey, who just hooked the ball into touch for a corner kick to Leeds. Good play for Junio. Out to Piro, and then the flying Dan James. Almost got in, but not quite. Now he has to walk across and get on the ball and take that corner kick. So Leeds' first corner of this second half. James is the man who's going to deliver it. Goal scorer in the first half. Would love to be goal provider now from this moment four leads James in it goes headed away by Sykes Somerville gives Kamara a bit of a job to get there and he does just do it and Gray is forced back because uh, Gardner Hickman was quickly out of a defensive position and pressurising the Leeds man in possession there and again Gray goes back to Melier as Bristol City have not wasted any time getting right up the pitch here so Leeds try and get it back in their half, but it's won uh, from Gray by Naismith. And Naismith runs parallel with the halfway line and then rolls it back into the path of Williams. He knocks it forward to Gardner Hickman and back to Williams. And Williams under pressure Ooh. from Piro, just keeps it away from Jorginho, but there wasn't much in it. Got it back to the keeper, then a long through ball, um, which Byron will have to chase because Connick's on his shoulder. Byron drops his shoulder and gets away from the oncoming Bristol City forward still going Sam Byram goes down loses possession no free kick given and the ball goes out to play for a Leeds throw in instead ball was to Pirot did well to dummy it first time Byram get past the man but Joel Pirot was on he's just played the ball back to Joe Roden Roden out to Archie Gray still half the pitch bathed in sunlight the other in shadow Shadows that were beginning to stretch just a little bit further now as uh, we head towards late afternoon here at a very warm Ellen Road. Kamara onto Piro. James has got to get back on side as Piro carries the ball forward for Leeds through the middle now. Lets it run off for Kamara. Kamara out wide to James. James, the man gone down in the middle is Jorginho. Big crowd appeal. He's still down. Leeds are still trying to attack as the ball comes into the middle and Jorginho lays prone in the penalty area. And uh, referee now goes to check he's OK. Yeah, certainly was a collision with Dickey, but 
I'm not sure if either player knew too much about it. Actually, it was Dickey's left arm, wasn't it? Just getting flung back behind him that catches Jorginho. Daniel Farker walks on, impassive at the moment. Yeah, Jorginho's not happy. Yeah. And Dickey's a little fortunate there to get away with that. Jorginho rightly so, because that's just a forearm smash, basically, in the face of Jorginho. So he's back up now, still touching his lips tentatively, Jorginho. And uh, maybe he'll have a, a fire in his belly as uh, Bristol City play the ball around at the back here. And O'Leary out to Gardner Hickman. Back it comes to Dickey, and Jorginho is going to get you. He's chasing him, but uh, Dickey just rolls it back to the goalkeeper before Jorginho can get there. Gray wins a header bravely for Leeds and gets it down to Ampadu. Let's just roll through his legs. And now it comes for Jorginho on the edge and into the penalty area. Tries to just tuck it wide for Archie Gray. And Ampadu commits the foul. But the play continues because Bristol City are on the counter-attack here with Bell. who holds up as um, players arrive to support him. Out left is Connick. And he's moving it up to the edge of the penalty area, into the penalty area. Ampadu will gather that one. But he's given it away a little unfortunately there. He's a lucky Ampadu, he's trying to divert it into the path of Rodon, but uh, Bristol City have it back again and Leeds remain under a little pressure here from Williams, who curves the pass across from one side to the other. And Somerville, man, he's really unlucky there to be uh, a judge to have fouled Gardner Hickman, isn't he, Somerville? Just, uh, he is. Uh, I think just before he got the ball, he just nudged him out of the way, but surely it is a physical game. Only a little nudge as well, but just got to concentrate now. Free kick. Bristol City will take their time, send the big men up, and we know what happened last time they did that. Yeah. Gardner Hickman is going to take the free kick for them. It's midway inside the Leeds half. It's uh, just to the right of centre. It goes in right-footed, curled towards the far side of the box, comes off the head of Jorginho. He's got to work out his bearings, and then, having done that, he can run the ball clear for Leeds. Lovely push down the line for Kamara. James has the ball from him now, he's closed down, still works it wide, well to Kamara, did well Dan James there to ride the challenges, Leeds come forward now with Ampadu and now Byron, space down this left for Somerville, oh he's just let the ball go under his feet there Somerville, he's got back to it on the touchline, he was much closer originally to the edge of the penalty area, now he comes in field to Ampadu, Ampadu tees it up for Kamara, 30 yards out, in it goes to Pirot to shoot, low, yes! oh what a goal that is! Perfectly positioned beyond the dive of goalkeeper O'Leary and Pirro's on target again. Terrific goal to put Leeds back in front. Leeds United 2, Bristol City 1. Excellent finish. Talk to me again about the positioning of Pirro and Jorginho. Oh, I tell you what, Pirro being the number 10 isn't a bad thing after all. Finds space on the edge of the box and then doesn't he tuck it away extremely well. But patient play moves at one yard and how often do we see that in between the defender's legs but hard and low knew exactly what he was going to do had a couple of opportunities in the first half didn't he Joel Piro this time he made no mistake excellent finish goalkeeper unsighted moved to his right and then couldn't get back to his left and Piro has another goal and now all of a sudden Ellen Road is noise and animation again five goals in eight Joel Piro that's uh, one heck of a return. Yeah, that's decent. Sykes, it's Bristol City, no doubt will seek to respond quickly. Some of it, infield to Kamara. He's just built up momentum there. Down the right first and then down the left. Connick pushing down the right for Bristol City to Sykes. Well worked by uh, Pascal Strauch and Ampadu. Court, play continues, not court, says... The referee, despite Ampadu still being down. The referee indicates that the Bristol City man played the ball. I don't think Ethan Ampadu would necessarily agree. As he remains on the ground, the referee allows play still to continue. As Connick, now Byram, defending for Leeds. Piro is going to be penalised for his challenge. And that goes to Bristol City. And Ampadu is back up now. And Keith Stroud is... Uh, not the most popular man inside Ellen Road just at the moment. No, I think he's gone into a 
a bit of a mess because I, I thought initially he was saying, well, it's, it's play on advantage, but it wasn't. We didn't have the ball. And then he went back and said, oh, no, he got the ball and made a, a circular ball shape, which I'm not so sure. And at the end of it all, Bristol City have ended up with a, a less than straightforward free kick themselves, which they'll play into the penalty area. Gardner Hickman is headed away by Pirro from the edge of the penalty area. Comes back out for Naismith and Gardner Hickman once more. Wide to Sykes, given away. It's to Pirro. And he's looked and he's seen there's a runner and it's Jorginho. And his first touch, what a shame. His first touch just pushed the ball. Pring gambled in coming across. Jorginho and it played off but now Leeds can come because James has picked it up in space and he's driving into the penalty area and Pring again is last man back and Pring this time gets in front of James but falls to the ground and knocks the ball behind for Leeds corner well Pring actually gambled well initially to get the ball off Jorginho and there again he knew James is quick but actually Pring can shift a bit himself but eventually the pressure did tell and he just shanked it out for a corner kick now can we get a third Pring well that's the challenge isn't it from this point, Leeds United again with a one goal advantage. Dan James to take the corner kick, 57th minute. In it goes. Heads up from Rodon towards goal. Still in there for Rodon to challenge again. Comes Rampadu on the edge of the box. Bristol City bodies around the ball. Connick attempts to clear. Gray sends it wide to James. Fine ball from Archie Gray to Dan James inside to Kamara gets a return ball in the penalty area puts it back in the middle and it's behind Jorginho and in front of Pirro and it's cleared him from in between the pair of them no oh, there was options weren't there as well but unfortunately Dan James couldn't pick either one out Somerville on this near side for Leeds United seek to keep the pressure on Bristol City Kamara stretches and wins that well and sets up Somerville for a run down this left side for Leeds on his right foot and he gets the return pass nicely from Byram. Somerville's into the penalty area. He can cut the ball back into the middle and Bristol City get bodies around the six-yard box to clear that one out as well as Leeds are pulling them left and right at the moment. They really are, and Pirro was on the penalty spot as well. And that's where Jorginho went to the near post. Pirro then drops out. But so many black shirts around Somerville, couldn't quite find either. Bristol City going to make a change. Andy King, experienced... Uh, midfielder is going to come on to add to the uh, Welsh international quota on the pitch. Former Welsh international. Strout defends well for Leeds, but his uh, attempted clearance is sent back towards Byram, and Byram pings it at um, Piro, who gets a hooked pass back from Kamara, who gives it to Byram and Kamara on this near side touchline on the halfway line, surrounded by Bristol City shirts. Strout, that's a defender's challenge, slides across in front of Connick and knocks it out for a throw in. Excellent, good play. Kamara just being a little bit too clever down here, but Strout made sure no one got past. Conway also coming on for Bristol City, so it's Tommy Conway and Andy King coming on. And uh, first man off is Gardner Hickman, and second man off here is Joe Williams in midfield, so King will go and replace him. And when it's all sorted. It's a throw into Bristol City, which uh, the referee asked them to retake. I am completely clueless as to why. Anyway, so they do it from exactly the same spot, and uh, it's whacked forward by Dickey towards the far side of the penalty area. And Bell lays on his back. Bell Excellent. can't get away from Archie Gray, who just puts a leg across him and knocks the ball into touch over on that far side. Bell's got. No change out of Archie Gray today. Throw in Bristol. Still in the position where they... Well, it's one of these, they're going to hurl it in the box. Uh, it worked ultimately, didn't it? Not yep. directly in the first half, but it put pressure on Leeds and brought a set piece from which they scored. So they kind of follow some, a similar pattern here. And everybody goes into the Leeds penalty area as Connick shapes to launch it into the area. In it goes now. Heads up well from Rodon. Wonderful. Oh, defensive header away from... Joe Rodon, still delivered back in by Pring. Bell is lurking on the edge of the penalty area to the right, almost out to the corner flag now. Pushed out that way by Byron, but he gets the ball back into the middle. Good-looking cross, Rodon, another good defensive header from Joe Rodon. Players coming in behind him, he dealt with the situation. Jorginho is by his own corner flag on that far side, he wins Leeds United, throw in, so he's done a good job. Wriggles this way in that, and uh, couldn't quite work his way out, but one a throw-in for us, but you're right. 
Joe Roden, a couple of really important defensive headers at the right time. And now we're gone. Region 82, Bristol City 1. What a noise here now at Ellen Road. It's been a good game. It's been a really good game. As it's sent forward by Gray, hopefully. Pirro will chase again, hopefully. Well, actually, what on earth was Dickey thinking of there? He had the route to goal to his own goalkeeper, completely open ahead of him, and in ten, he just put it back into touch over his shoulder. Well, whatever he was thinking, he didn't actually uh, do the right thing, but what we need to do is keep the tempo high, keep asking questions, taking it to Bristol, because surely another goal, and that would be it. Jorginho. Going down that far side touchline, and the ball's still in play. Now it rolls out. The lead's throwing by the corner flag. Jorginho riding the challenges and gets a little high five off Archie Gray, who's gone across that far side to take the throw in for Leeds. Gray shields his eyes as the sun is over the roof of the West End here. Looking for movement, perhaps inside the penalty area, probably shorter than that. Dan James is one option, gives it to Pirro, who's on the touchline. He's surrounded by Bristol City players. They uh, get the ball and then lose the ball, and then there's a, a foul in the middle of all of that. Well, Andy King, uh, there is the old stager uh, for you. Andy King goes down, clutching his ankle, wins a free kick. As soon as it's given, literally springs straight back up and jumps towards the halfway line. That's frustrating. But yeah, got his team out of a hole. That's what he is after, but we now just have to be sensible. Keep doing the right thing, just wonder when we might get uh, one or two reinforcements on the pitch, because as we keep saying nowadays, certainly this season, our bench is looking strong. As the ball is put up in the air into the Bristol City half, it comes down for Piro. He rather runs into trouble there. And there's a bit of space for Bristol City down this right side in their own half still. Now they cross the halfway line with Sykes. Sykes plays it in. And it comes out towards Bell on this near side off Conway, but he's overhit the pass and it goes out of play for a Leeds United throw down by corner flag to our right hand side. The South Stand, South Stand in fine voice just at the moment. Over the shoulder of Sam Byron as we look. Sam Byron taking his time with a throw in. Looks for movement down the line. Got some distance on that throw. Jorginho, oh, it's lovely control. And they'll thank the final touches off. Well, he's uh, Leeds get the throw in there from Jorginho. I thought the final touch just came off the front of his toes, but uh, nobody no, appealed I didn't. it. No, definitely <laughs> off them. Not a problem. Our well, throw. Well, in fairness, nobody else said that or thought that, <laughs> so uh, just me. <laughs> Byram, again, throws it long down the line. Piro beaten in the air by Dickey. Jorginho comes in, caught right in front of the referee there by Knight. And Leeds United again, Jorginho, in fairness, much like Andy King. Big reaction to the challenge, and as soon as the free kick's given, straight back up on his feet, off he goes. Well, at least he didn't catch him fully, otherwise he would have stayed down there for a while, but he's fine. Great noise here. Somerville from Jorginho. Now Ampadu. Ampadu rolls it into the path of Piro. Piro further wide to James, who's in the penalty area. Cuts the ball back into the middle now, and it spins up, and it goes across the face of goal, and it goes behind for a corner kick. We're now starting to get in and around and behind them. Certainly around the 18-yard box. James on that right-hand side as well. Some of them actually went for the, the early run of the box. The ball didn't come in, and James in the end decided to go on his own, but good pressure again. So Somerville comes to this near side to take the corner kick for Leeds. He can swing this one in towards the goalkeeper. Not the tallest goalkeeper, O'Leary. He's played well in the first half, but just over six foot. In it goes, in that kind of general area. And it's broken clear. Kamara, brave as you like, with a header on the edge of the penalty area. But it still ends up in the path of Conway. But he's got to go back to Sykes, and Sykes happy just to deliver it long towards and over the halfway line. Gray holds his man off. Rode on his behind. Now, Gray's got a little bit of space if he wants to work it. Man on, as you can hear is the call from the crowd, and uh, he reacted well to that. Stay calm, and just gave it to Joe Rodon, and Rodon goes back to Melio. Pascal Stroud back to Melier again. Right side of the penalty area to Rodon. we just got to go long here, and um, James will chase, and might get there yet, not quite. Bigger figure of Pring got up in the air ahead of him. Back to O'Leary it goes, he clears with the boot. 
and then uh, up to the halfway line where Rodon does well, wins it well for Leeds United and Ampadu just waiting on his shoulder to provide that out ball gets it back to Melier and Melier goes along with it James can't get involved, he's offside Pring wins the header, Ampadu's underneath it back flick, surely he didn't mean that did he, he did. Ampadu? into the path of Rodon, Leeds actually have now though conceded possession in their own half with Connick moving forward for Bristol City Byram trying to keep him away, he's got to go back at him again and so's Kamara, Kamara does the job and then he rolls him off, what a shame it wasn't quite into the path of Somerville there who was on the run um, Bristol City come again themselves, space on the edge of the penalty area. King's pass is over hit and it's just kept in play and then Byram goes in to try and win it for Leeds on the touchline it's a ball into the middle for Bell who tries a spectacular overhead kick unsuccessfully and suddenly nice ball out by um, James to Pirro, and now Leeds will come with Jorginho from the halfway line. Jorginho swings inside another couple of chances, plays a great ball to Somerville. Somerville's in the penalty area, left foot, hits the post. Great save from the keeper, pushed it just away from the goal. He hit the inside of the post and Bristol City get it clear. What an effort that was, got to be careful. Oh, Rodon's oh. made an error at the other end and uh, in seeking to retrieve the situation he's going to get yellow carded here because he's pulled Bell back and suddenly we don't have time to dwell on that excellent moment for Leeds which almost almost brought the third goal now we're looking at Bristol City with a chance to put the ball in the Leeds penalty area from a free kick well from one end to the other we could have gone we should have gone 3-1 up apart from a great save from Max O'Leary and all of a sudden last man Joe Roden I think he was far enough away from the goal though just to Get that yellow card. Mehmeti's coming on the Albanian international for Bristol City. And he'll go straight into the penalty area, making two changes, are they, here? Yep. And um, also coming off his bell, who's been uh, up against Gray down the Bristol City left. Mehmeti's the man who comes on to replace him. So changes made by Bristol City, and they have a free kick outside the 10 yards outside the Leeds United penalty area to the left yeah the other player came on was Vyman so he's uh, yeah, got an experienced player yeah. Andreas Vyman one of yeah. the players who was in that Bristol City side the last time they played here at Ellen Road in the championship so Naismith with a free kick for Bristol City whips in Melier punches the ball up to the edge of the penalty area but it drops there for Mehmeti to get the ball back into the penalty area he's trying to get the ball past Ampadu and Ampadu stands his ground and it comes off the chest of Ethan Ampadu and out for a Bristol City throw in on this near side. We know what happens next. Yep. Connick comes across and gathers the ball, and wipes moisture from it in his shirt in front of the travelling Bristol City supporters. And then everybody else has retreated into the penalty area, awaiting this long throw from the Bristol City forward. Hurls it in there again. Heads got from Jorginho. Comes out to the edge and beyond of the penalty area. Delivered straight to Jorginho. Jorginho, Leeds have got a break here. It's 3v2. Jorginho over the halfway line. James ahead of him. Dan James, not quite the pass he wanted. Jorginho goes in and gets it back anyway. Jorginho into middle. Somerville! Oh. Oh. A full stretch. Somerville at the far post. Just could not divert the ball into the back of the net. Sensational breakaway from Leeds and Jorginho was at the beginning and almost at the end of it. it really was. Excellent play, but the Pass was under hit initially. James has been taken out and a lovely little chip to the far post. And Somerville going with his right foot. Could he have done it with his left? Might have been slightly easier, but that was in the stride. When he was running forward outside of the right boot, just puts it wide. A whisker away from the all important third goal. Bristol City have the ball with Sykes on this near side. Plays it into space. Byram off Connick. Gets the ball back from Pirro. Somerville to Kamara. Now Byram into Somerville. And he gets it off Ampadu. And he's brought down. Some of this football is really, really impressive from Leeds. Just short passing in small boxes. And working their way through Bristol City's attempts. But they do it quickly. That's the thing. And of course, when you do get on the ball, they're so comfortable. The likes of Somerville, certainly Jorginho, difficult to stop. Back it goes from Strauch to Melier. Melier with a long ball forward. Jorginho's waiting underneath it. So is Naismith, and he wins the header. 
gives it to Pring, who just puts it up in the air and over the halfway line, and it bounces once, and it bounces into the middle, well, into the midst of the East Stand. And Leeds United will have a throw in round about the halfway line. Still have a little glance down towards the um, bench. I suspect we might see some movement shortly. Bamford's warming up, Anthony's warming up, Cresswell's warming up. Leeds have a throw in down the right side. James. Gray can't get the ball forward. Leeds have got to defend this one. Melier will come to gather the ball as it rolls towards his goal. Think of the chances we've had today. Uh, it's going to be a game at home that we, we batter someone four or five. Uh, it will be because we make those sort of chances. Could, today could have been that day, but we just haven't quite taken those chances. Kamara and Somerville linking up nicely. Played the ball wide. Somerville to Dan James. James takes it past one challenge. Gets to his feet as he falls to the ground. And, um, tries to recover the situation, but King has it instead for Bristol City. Leeds fans felt that should have been a foul against Dan James. Referee Stroud was not in agreement. And Bristol City get the ball out towards the far side touchline, still just outside their own box before Pring goes long over the halfway line. Rodon's ill touch is good into the path of Kamara, but Kamara's conceded possession on the halfway line. Great work by Gray to go and get it back for Leeds. And now Ampadu, look at the space suddenly for Ampadu. If they can Turn. work it out to this near side. Somerville through the middle. Jorginho rolls the first challenge into the penalty area. Jorginho! Defender Pring makes the block and sends the shot over the crossbar. Leeds corner. Oh, it's coming, it's coming, but we can't get that third goal. Excellent play again. Jorginho rolls his man and just that little feint to get that extra half a yard. Pring, to be fair to him, does defend well. Pring has the look of a man who's put in a proper shift there. Well, he's defended well, hasn't he? And he looks tired and ragged. But that's the point of, about playing a high tempo, which is why teams will come here and try and break things up, go slow, because at that high tempo, it is difficult to keep defending like uh, he has been. So far, he's done well, but can we make it tell, certainly in the last 10 minutes or so? Dan James with the corner kick from that far side. James, in it comes. And it comes down for Byram, and it's put in by Jorginho, <laughs> and the flag is raised. And Jorginho is offside, and the celebrations are cut short. And he lies on his back, and he puts his hands to his head, and the free kick is taken quickly, and Leeds have got to switch on, because Bristol City were suddenly, briefly, right at the other end. Leeds have it back again with Byram, halfway line, into Ampadu. Ampadu just slows things down, looks forward. Now Kamara. Jorginho uh, must be thinking, is it today? Maybe not. Well, I think he's thinking it's not going to be today. But he's got to keep going, keep putting himself in those positions, keep believing, and it just might. Well, he stuck that one in, but uh, this time it was the flag. Jorginho has it again. This time no flag. Oh, lovely ball. Lovely ball from Jorginho into Byron. Byron's moving forward for Leeds now. In it comes to Somerville. Gives it back to Byron. Into the edge of the area to Jorginho. Back to goal, turns towards goal, into the penalty area, tries to get the cross in, and uh, it's blocked by Andy King. He's worked hard, hasn't he, Jorginho, and he's trying and trying and trying. I don't know how much energy he's got left. Yeah, he's, uh, he's an animated character anyway, and um, there's many gestures out there that show that um, he's working his socks off here. His socks are always down anyway, <laughs> right from minute one. Somerville goes back to Pascal Strauch. 74th minute, still 2-1. James over on the far side. It's a strip of sunshine now. Ampadu into Piro. Through the middle, looking for Jorginho. The space now for Leeds in this half. Somerville's waiting for oh. the ball from Kamara. It's gone to Piro instead. Oh, and they almost had too much time and space to work in there, Leeds, and they got it on. between them. They didn't quite get it right as um, it comes back for Rodon, and he'll go all the way back to Melier. And Melier will deliver it wide to Sam Byram. Byram quickly close, uh, sorry, Gray rather, other side, has uh, run it into touch. Option got closed off there, Archie Gray, as um, he's tried to set off going forward, just uh, came off his toes and went out for a Bristol City throw in. 15 yards inside that leads half. They have it over on that far side. Piro's back there, defending for Leeds with a, a challenge on Pring, which knocks the ball out of play again. Almost an identical position for another throw-in. This time it goes back to Naismith in the Bristol City 
half, who comes across the back to Dickey. And then Dickey to the edge of the centre circle to James. And then given back to Dickey at the, at the back. And now James just to his right. James will go back into the centre circle to King. King delivers back to uh, Dickey. Leeds are trying to close all the gaps here, which is why Bristol City are playing it right to left across their own defence. And still, now they go forward. King, though, closed down. So it comes out to this right side to James again. James can look forward now. And it's played around the corner by Vyman to Sykes. Somerville got an important intervention there. And Byron's just happy to knock it into touch. And Connick is the nearest man to it. And he'll stay in proximity of the ball. He picks it up. And he'll throw this ball into the penalty area again here. Leeds are making a change shortly with uh, Anthony off the bench down below. Ready to come on. So Connick takes the full extent of the run-up here. And in it goes, so that penalty area. A prodigious throw, and Melier has to stretch behind him to punch it clear. And it's still alive for King in the penalty area. Delivers it wide to the far side of the box. Bodies in the way of the man in possession. It's fed back into the path of Pring, who will deliver into the penalty area now. Ampadu doesn't get there, and um, final touch. It's come off Byram, and it's a Bristol City corner. Needed that, because Dickey was there at the far post. And a good ball chipped to the back post by Pring. We defend well, but... These are moments where we've got to be strong. And this is where Bristol City will feel surely they've got their opportunity. And they showed it in the first half. And the man who scored the goal for them has come across to take this corner kick, Naismith. So and plenty around Melier in that six-yard box. As it's come in, and it's gone across, and he's off the line at the far post. Terrific header clear by Sam Byram, who was perfectly positioned to keep that ball out because it was going in, no question. Wow. And then suddenly Melier throws out quickly and James plays the ball over the top. Somerville, it's just going to be ahead of Somerville and O'Leary's come to clear. And um, an opportunity there for Leeds to break two on one was not quite taken. It's a fantastic delivery, isn't it, from the corner kick. We know all that in the first half. Here we see it again in the touch. Now Sam Byron to get at that back post and clear the danger. Brilliant from Byron. Changes made. Dan James is coming off to warm applause on the score sheet for Leeds today. And uh, Anthony will come on in his place. Just seeing the save as well from Max O'Leary there. A wonderful strike. A little straight at the keeper, but plenty of power. But O'Leary makes an excellent stop. So Leeds' first change of the afternoon comes with um, a little under 13 minutes remaining here at Ellen Road. Gray with a throw in to Ampadu. Doesn't really help him out with the return ball there. Mind you, the throw wasn't great either. So between them, they've conceded a throw now. And Bristol City throw back into their own half to Naismith. And then in it comes to James. And uh, Naismith gets it back again. Chops it back into Dickey. Midway inside the Bristol City half. Jorginho comes to pressure. Uh, O'Leary's come out of the penalty area to gather the keeper. And um, the keeper takes his time. And O'Leary delivers it right foot, swings the ball out to the far touchline. It's a good ball as well. And it's picked up on that far touchline by the sub, Mehmeti, who takes on Gray, whips the ball in. Rodon has to head it clear for Leeds. Pirro underneath it, waiting. Wins a good header. Now there's a chance for a counter-attack if Jorginho can stay on. Uh, well, Anthony was hoping that he just set off then, I think, wasn't he, Jorginho? But he, he, he stopped his run to stay onside and then didn't start it again, and it all broke down, and it's king for Bristol City. Needed to go first time, that was the problem, the extra bounce. Jorginho was offside. Down the far touchline to McMetty again, who gets it to the byline, cuts it back into the near post, and Rodon at the near post can only turn the ball behind for another Bristol City corner. Well, he's appealing for offside, but referee's assistant having none of it. Another corner kick to defend. And this time from the far side. And this time Naismith is in the middle, waiting. As Bristol City push everybody bar Pring into that penalty area. Comes in low, near post. Still cleared back out for another cross in from that far side. And it comes in again low, and it's still there for James to deliver back into the path of Pring. 
Pring left foot drives, and that is a good decision from a Leeds United perspective because a left full back from 35 yards out is unlikely to trouble the goalkeeper from that sort of range. Yeah, certainly a, a long way out, and yes, he struck it okay, but always going high and wide. I'm just got to get back to it now, get back on the ball, try and dictate the play, control proceedings, and see this game out. Ten to go. Patrick Bamford may be joining the action shortly. As Melier takes the goal kick. Long, Jorginho can't get to it. Pring wins it in the air. Pirro can't get to it either. Connick has it for Bristol City in the centre circle. And they've got it out to Mehmeti again. He's a good outlet for them down that left-hand side. He comes inside Gray. Gray, brilliant challenge to get the ball away from him. Great defending. Now Ampadu, now there's space always on this counter-attack, they're throwing so many forward. Surely Anthony is caught there, and he is, and it's a free kick to Leeds. Stroud took a, a moment longer perhaps just to see what developed from the ball coming off him. Nothing did, so Leeds got the free kick. Impressive from Archie Gray, isn't it? McMeady, the sub has come on there and he's looked lively, fast and sharp, but Gray watched the ball all the way, got his foot in and stopped the winger in his tracks. Rode on across the back to Pascal Strauch. On it goes to Anthony. There's a lot of space for Byram down this left-hand side. And he gets the ball now. And, um Carries it. Has to bring it back onto his right foot to Anthony. Anthony back towards Kamara on the halfway line. Kamara into Ampadu. And now Anthony back to Ampadu and then Jorginho. Oh, oh no, Jorginho um, thought that Byram had set off on the run down to his uh, left hand side that Byram had stayed still and the ball was just played into the area where he thought he was going to be and then Jorginho, what is nice is that as soon as he realised what had happened he set off after it himself anyway Yep, he did, and I think if Anthony was in that position he would have made that run, Byram thought no, better rob it Change being made, Patrick Bamford is going to come off and Jorginho departs it's been another entertaining afternoon he'll know he should have a goal but there's been much else to enjoy. And um, he applauds the applause. Surely has. Well, first thing that he has done fantastically well is his work rate. Absolutely superb. But then you, of course, his lovely hold up play, tricks and flicks, and unfortunately just hasn't got that goal that he probably deserved. 36,386 the attendance, the away contingent numbering uh, 1,892. So full house. As um, Andy King heads forward for Bristol City, Strauch heads into touch, almost on the halfway line. Sykes comes across this near side to take the throw in in front of Daniel Farker. And Bamford goes chasing to try and put pressure on as it bounces back into the path of Naismith, who just goes long and wide, looking again for Mehmeti down that left-hand side, and he finds him as well. And he's uh, out by the corner flag with Gray in front of him. Gray trying to hold him in that position. Goes in and puts a foot in on him again. And Mehmeti slips. And Gray takes the ball away from him. Wonderful work again. Now then, Somerville chops inside the first challenge. Still going, Somerville. And Bamford broke from the line and then stopped and went back again. It was on the cusp of offside as Somerville played it through the middle for him. And he couldn't quite get to it. It was unfortunate. Sykes actually does well. The right back to come across and cover because the centre-halves were, were stuck, rooted to the spot. Timing of the run and ball was good, but Sykes... Save the day for Bristol. Archie Gray, 17 years old. Here's his name ringing around Ellen Road again here. Sykes running the ball in field to Dickey. Good block by Kamara. Came in to prevent the ball going forward. It went off him sideways and out for a, a Bristol City throw in still deep in their own half. And that's important with six minutes of normal time remaining. Still press high, still make sure... We them no chances, no easy balls through that midfield to the front third of Bristol City. Byron goes in to beat Connick in the air, but it comes off the head of Byron for another Bristol City throw in, this time closer to the halfway line. Again, Kamara's come in to try and win it for Leeds. Doesn't quite succeed this time, not the first time, almost the second time. And then it breaks away from Kamara and Anthony from Strauch's attempt to pass and comes out for another throw in. Down below us, still in that Bristol City half, back to the goalkeeper O'Leary, who pushes it out of the penalty area to Naismith, who goes wide to that left side to Pring, who takes it inside of Somerville and crosses the halfway line. 
Andy King comes off him with the ball and then goes all the way back to the goalkeeper O'Leary from the halfway line who starts things going again with the pass out to Dickey who comes out wide to this right side to Sykes over the top, a little bit of space in behind Melier's got to come quickly and he does come to the edge of the penalty area uh, just for a moment there I thought Sykes' wow. ball had picked up the man wearing the number Byman. 14 shirt Byman in all sorts of space but he was actually just a little too far ahead of him well who's running with him, who's picking him up questions were asked, Kamara and Strauch had that conversation, hopefully it's clear now Rode on with a ball up towards the halfway line didn't uh, stay in play despite some of those efforts so it's going to be a Bristol City throw in on the halfway line Piro doesn't touch the ball so he can't be accused of attempting to time waste which is sensible final five minutes plus whatever's to be added here wouldn't be a great deal certainly not anywhere near as many as uh, we saw on Wednesday evening when we ended up crossing the 100 minute mark Dickey oh look there's space for Bristol City and King to that left side to Mehmeti to cross low into the penalty area road on with a block at the edge of the six yard box it's an important one it's a Bristol City throw in level with the edge of the Leeds penalty area and Pring has it Leeds have got to get closer and it's into the middle and the heads go up and it's come to the near side for Feynman brilliant block by Byram he's there again Sam Byram and he gets a big pat on the back of the head from Melier because, again, crucial intervention. Well, it really is, but we need to wake up, don't we? Make sure we stop the crosses and then certainly deal with the crosses when they, if and when they do come in. Come in again. Pascal Strout has come off him and he's gone behind for a corner kick. Bristol City putting pressure on Leeds United in these closing stages here. And Naismith has come to this near side to take the corner kick. This game has more life in it yet. Well, it certainly has, and it shouldn't, though, should it? We yeah. should be away with a goal or two clear at least, but Bristol City certainly are a, a good side, and they're making a, a comeback here. So they have the corner, and Naismith delivers it into the penalty area, curls it in. Melier punches towards the edge and beyond the penalty area, comes down for Sykes. Sykes works it square to Pring. Leeds are implored to get out the penalty areas. It comes back in from Pring. Shape on that over the head of King, and it just carries beyond Naismith, and the final touch was off King, and it's going to be a goal kick, not a corner kick, and there's a, an air of relief all round. There is. I'm breathing a sigh of relief myself, because what we do know, Bristol City haven't really calmed us open, but from set pieces, they are a danger. Good quality delivery in. Good centre half as well, attack the ball, and they make it awkward and difficult for us. And Leeds have the goal kick, which Melier plants in the, the ball in the centre of the six-yard box, and he sends the two central defenders forward, so they're going along with this one. Okay. Happy Bryn? <laughs> <laughs> Old school, love it. Actually, um, no, terrible decision. We it's just gone give straight it away. To touch, gone straight into touch, deep, albeit in, well, relatively deep in the Bristol City half, in front of the Bristol City technical area anyway. And um, so Bristol City immediately regained possession, which is, I know, the argument against doing that with a goal kick. I am aware. Uh, O'Leary with a short ball out the box to Naismith. Leeds would, a, a little period of possession wouldn't go on this here because uh, Leeds just haven't had the ball for a few minutes now. They've been reactive rather than proactive here. And so as the ball goes behind from a long attempted pass forward for Connick and goes out for a goal kick, maybe this... Uh, is the situation that offers itself to do that now. That may depend on what Melier decides to do with this goal kick as well. Great support, and listen to the crowd, just trying to will the team over the line. Still a few minutes left. I'm not sure if you rightly say how long extra time will be, but it can't be too long in this second half. Three or four would be a yeah. maximum, I would predict, as Melier goes along again over the head of Bamford who goes to ground clutching his head from uh, a challenge of Naismith and Stroud saw it and uh, didn't see a problem with it and now he stopped play because it's a whack on the ear for Patrick Bamford so thereby um, designating it a head injury and so uh, he's now helped to his feet by Naismith and Patrick Bamford Naismith explains what happened it's the arms again the arms again are just flailing around and uh, hit Bamford in the face Jorginho had the same treatment earlier in the game. At least he's consistent. You're not getting the foul for that. Dickey at the back. Closed down by Pirro. And uh, Pirro has caught his man late. So the free kick is uh, awarded. And Bristol City have um, a chance with 
O'Leary on the ball in his own half to push it back up into that Leeds half and everybody starts heading in that direction now. It's messy, isn't it? It really is and now they're just going to keep launching it long into our box if they can. So O'Leary with that long ball forward now. On the edge of the area, Strout can't get there and Gray does well to hold McMetty off and uh, he knew that the previous touch was off a Bristol City player and so that results in a Leeds United goal kick and the board will be going up in the next couple of seconds to tell us how much there is left in this game. Four added minutes. Um, as there was in the first half, uh, need I remind you. So, four minutes to see this game through. It's been a, a tough game. Bristol City, well, I we thought they'd be more than decent and we've seen how good a side they are. Side with a really good away record. Three wins prior to this on the road. Just one defeat. And they have the ball in the own penalty, their own penalty area. O'Leary quickly forward into the lead half. Rodon's up in the air. Goes for the second header and wins it as well. And it drops now. This is where Leeds need to be clever. As Somerville looks forward. Somerville runs in past two challenges. Still going, trying to go. And Anthony's come in to help him out. And Anthony has got the ball. And he gets up to the edge of the penalty area. Anthony on his right foot, shoots goalwards. Oh, didn't get any power in the shot. It was an easy pickup for O'Leary. Just wonder whether there was somewhere there was another option maybe for Anthony. And O'Leary again over the head of Ampadu. Rodon once more with the header. And there's space for Ampadu. Keep them all. That would be my shout as um, Pirro has it from Ampadu. Players forward here. Somerville and Bamford. The space for Anthony to this near side of the penalty area. Oh, too short of Anthony. And it was begging to be played to the Leeds man on this near side. And Connick is in possession, gets the ball forward. And suddenly Bristol City have got three or four bodies up and over the halfway line. Connick gives it away. Pirro intercepts. And Anthony helps him. Now, this time, think about it, chaps. <laughs> um, Anthony carries it, carries it into Bamford. Now the space. Somerville to his right side. Somerville with a shot. Oh, he's put it over the top. <sighs> They don't know how to make uh, it difficult, do they? My message to the boys would be score the third. <laughs> just score the third and finish this game, but we just can't quite do it. And Somerville oh, just waits, leans back, and it's over the bar. That was not convincing. Changes to be made for the final two minutes. Three changes to be made by Leeds United for the final couple of minutes of this game. Ailing, Cooper and Bruev all coming on. And... Um, it will be Kamara amongst those being replaced. He's had an excellent game for Leeds. He really has. Played very well. Lovely turns and spins. Good closing down. Somerville's the other man who's uh, had good moments. Nearly scored. Um, but maybe a little frustrated with himself at not actually scoring. And the final change sees Pirro come off having notched again for Leeds United here. So... Cooper and Gruev and Ailing all on to the closing stages of this game. Some experience out there now. Let's see this game through, boys. As the ball comes forward from O'Leary. Cooper underneath it. Header Strauch behind him to win another one. And then Gruev can't find a teammate. And it's um, Rechmeti down the right side. Ailing's gone across it. How many right backs have he's got on the pitch now? As ailing it is, who as does many as required. Archie Gray's <laughs> job, and then there's a foul there. That's a great foul, won by Gruet. Yeah. Fair play. He just drew the challenge, and it's in Leeds half, and it slows things down. And we're into the final 30 seconds of the added time period here. And um, bar that little flurry of substitutions, it shouldn't be too much beyond that. Yeah, that was good. I thought Bamford would actually get the ball and he played the advantage but he lost it so fortunately it was brought back and we can just eat into the clock Melier comes out the penalty area to take the free kick for Leeds asks for confirmation from the referee and assistant uh, and in doing so I think feels he's wasted a few more seconds plays a long ball gets it as close to the far touchline as he can Ailing goes up wins the header the ball goes out of play and we're now in added time of added time as um, O'Leary wants to take a quick short goal kick, gives it to Naismith, the whistles go up around Ellen Road. O'Leary's out the penalty area, Bamford's trying to charge him down, it's cleared forward, 
and it comes down for Ampadu. Just hooks it. Oh, Bamford's on side. Bamford's on side. Clearing through now. Patrick Bamford just outside the penalty area. Bamford. Oh, rolled it into the middle. Unselfishly looking for Anthony, who was arriving. But the defender got in between them to clear it behind for a corner. But it's like winning the game, isn't it? it well, should you do say it. that. <laughs> I'd just rather it's another like, goal. Listen, I'm clutching at straws <laughs> OK, here. OK. The ball should have been played across earlier. If not, then you've got to be positive and hit the target yourself. But we're eating into the clock even more. That's got to be it, surely. Connick goes to try and speed things up here. As uh, a pairing of Anthony and Bamford have gone into this near corner to take the corner kick, please. I don't think he's going to go very far. That would be my prediction. Uh, as Bristol City put three players as close as they can. Referee says, get on with it. Bamford. Oh, he's hooked it in to Anthony in the penalty area. Comes back out for Ampadu. Ampadu can go for the um, corner kick. Now, the referee offside. has just signalled an offside instead. Yeah. And uh, it's all eyes on Keith Stroud now because we've now played a minute and a half added time on the added time. Where's that come from? And that's the full-time whistle. And Leeds United come out on top for the second time in a week. Just the one goal margin, despite a host of chances being created. But James in the first half and Pirro in the second half. Their contribution important. Their contribution enough to ensure another home victory here for Leeds. So it will be happy faces heading into the international break. It's finished here at Ellen Road. Leeds United 2, Bristol City 1. And the only thing that matters is a win. That's a big three points. Six points at home in the last couple of games. And going into that break is just what we needed. Wasn't easy. Bristol City, uh, a very good side, clearly away from home. We saw their dangers, but saying that 2-1, we should have been 3 or 4-1 up. The game should have been buried, but it wasn't. And we saw it out extremely well. One or two little nervy moments, but overall, we were the better side. Deserved to win. Well done, boys. The Leeds continue the upward progression in the championship table. Three more points on the board. And now we have a couple of weeks break. It's a shame. I would like to keep the momentum going maybe here, but it's the way that the season is set up. And when we return to action, it will be with a difficult-looking away game against Norwich City. But it's been another good Leeds United performance here today. Should have been more convincing, could have been more convincing, but it doesn't matter because Leeds United have won. That's the only thing that matters. Full-time scoreline, Leeds United 2, Bristol City 1.